Welcome to Fred and Amy's Math Shack. Shack. We're going to start the idea of measures of location today, and essentially that is the same as an average. So what I want you to think about, pause the video, is what is an average? Because sometimes the mean is known as the average, but actually it's, it's not. Mean, median and mode are all examples of averages. And what they are are different, different ways of measuring the central tendency or identifying essentially the central position in a data set using just a single value. You might have hundreds, you might have thousands of values, and you're just trying to get a single value to you know, give a bit of a feel for what's going on. For example, the height of a population. You know, you don't you don't want to have thousands and thousands of values to look at. You just want this single value that gives you a feel for the average height. And then you might be you can compare that with other countries. You can compare it with that in the past very easily. So and that's what statistics is often about. Just trying to get single numbers to give us really useful information. And the three most common measures that you may well have heard of before are the mean, median, and mode. And in different situations, some of them become more appropriate than in others. But in fact, there are, there are other uh, ones which I'll, I'll come back to. So I just want to test you on these for the moment. Okay, so here's some, here's some questions. So I want you to um, pause the video and have a go at each one as the answer A, B, C or D. Right, the mean of, um, the mean of five numbers, you add them up. And then you divide by how many there are. So it's absolutely fine to use your, your calculator for this. I get 45 over 5, i.e. this is going to be 9. What if I flip it around and tell you the mean of some numbers is 6? Then what should this starred number be? Well, in this case, if I add all the numbers up and divide by how many there are to get the mean, if I've got the mean and I know how many there are, I can work out what they add up to by doing 6 times 4, the, num the amount that I have. And that's going to give me 24. So I can then add the rest up and do 24 minus 17. So the answer is going to be 7. How about the median of these numbers? Well, the median is the middle number. Um, so basically I've got three here, I've got three here. It's actually going to be exactly halfway in between. If there is, if there are two in the middle, then you essentially take the mean of the middle two. It's going to be 3.5. This one. Right, there's one thing I didn't say in the last question. To do the median, the numbers have to be ordered, otherwise it doesn't make any sense. You could, you know, you could get whatever you want as the median. So in this question, you'll be careful, you should first of all order them. And we're told that the median's five, so there's no way, there's no way the star could be the first one, the second one. It's got to be, um, sorry, it's no way the, th the, the missing number could be the first or the second. It couldn't be the last one, it's going to have to be here. And then for it to be five, right, I know this middle bit, the average between three and star is going to be five. So it's got to be, um, it's got to be seven for this to work because I'm going to find the average of three and seven. That's five. Okay, again, just flipping that problem on its head. How about this one? What's the mode here? The mode is the most common, so that makes it six in this case here. And then finally, a question that we're really going to be kind of getting into today that you may have seen before, you may not have, which of the following would not be representative of this data? Is it the mean? Is it the median? Is it the mode? Or are all representative? When I say representative, I mean, does it give a good measure of central tendency, actually? 
And the median, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, the median would be the fifth one, it would be 8. And that's that would be a pretty good way of demonstrating the data set, that 8 is kind of the average value. So I'm happy with that. The mode is also 8, so that's doing a good job. That just leaves us with the mean. And if we add all of these up, which I'm doing now, hopefully you have a go at it as well. Then if I divide it by how many I have, I think it was 9. And the mean is actually 42.8 recurring. And that is not representative of the set. Basically, the mean has been affected by this extreme value here. Um, and what we get is not a number that actually really represents the whole set. So I would argue that A, the mean is not representative because sometimes people say, yeah, mean's the best average, but, but it's not. In some cases, it all depends on the data you have. But here, the mean is skewed by the extreme value, and that's something to be, be aware of. Just a quick reminder, if you couldn't, if, you know, maybe um, English is not your first language or like you've just forgotten what the mean is, here's a little definition of it. And it is the most commonly used measure. And it's really useful when a data set doesn't have outliers, i.e. this was an outlier here, 320 is way beyond all the other values. And we add the values up and we divide by how many there are. We're going to see in A-level that there's another way of writing this. We don't use words, we use notation, but that is to come. Another one is then the median, and it's the middle number. If you have an odd number of values, then it's quite easy to find the middle. If you have an even number of values and you've got two in the middle and you find you you find the median or the or the mean of the middle two numbers. I should say the sorry, it's not the median of the middle, it's the it's the mean of the middle two numbers that you get. There's another way you can do this, and that is to work out the position by taking the number of values, adding one, and dividing it by two. So if I have nine observations, I do nine plus 1 divided by 2, which is 5, and that tells me exactly where to look. So I don't have to, you know, I don't have to kind of count, I don't even have to know, I don't have to kind of cross them off and, and see what I get. I can just say, right, it's the fifth value, count 5 along. In this case, I do 8 plus 1 over 2, and that will give me 4.5. So I'd know I need to, I got the fourth one, it would be the one in between the fourth and the fifth. So that is something to be aware of. Because if I had, um, you know, if I had 100 values, then I wouldn't have to sort of really carefully find um, where the middle one is or middle two by like crossing them off. I could just look at the 50.5th value, i.e. between the 50, 50th and the first one, 50th and the 51st one, because 100 plus 1 over 2 is 50.5. So a, a formula to be aware of. And it, it just works. Like, why, why do we not just divide by two? Well, if we do, then we don't actually get that middle one. We, we have to add the one, and then it will guarantee to give us the middle every single time. So my next question is, why do we have three averages? Why do we have the mean, mode, median? And which is the best? I've kind of given you some feeling of perhaps why you know, some, some are not the best, uh, or why some don't work in some situations. But I want you to pause the video and have a think about this. Well, my first answer is that actually we don't have three averages. We have loads more than that. And if you look on Wikipedia, here, here are some of them. What we call the mean, adding them up and dividing by how many there are, is sometimes called the arithmetic mean. And here's some notation we're going to look at. I don't stress about this at the moment. We'll, we'll get onto that. We've got the median, but there's also something called the geometric median. We've got our mode. There's also something called the geometric mean. That's actually when you times them all together. And if you have n values, you then take the nth root. So there's, there's all these other ones as well. So the three that you learn, they're the most common, but there's absolutely loads. And they, you know, some of them just have, um, they're useful in some situations. And they, um, I'm not going to go into any more detail than that. And for A-level maths, we don't, we don't need to be aware of that. But I wanted you to be aware that it, there are not just three averages. There are more than three. And then as to which is the best, well, yeah, that all depends on the situation. So I'm not going to answer that quite this second. That was just to get you to think about it. But can you try, pause the video and try these three questions here. 
State with a given reason which is the mean, median or mode would be most useful in the, in the following situations. Okay, the manager of a shoe shop um, are really like shoes are measured in these discrete values. So like six, seven, eight, maybe eight and a half, but we can't get any value. So actually, when the shoe shop is um, looking at shoe stocks, they don't they don't want to know what the middle value is necessarily. They they want to know the most common type that they that they need. Um, so. Oh, that's not actually showing up. OK, what the answer is, is that it is the mode. The modal value will be really useful because if you have the mean, we might have um, you might have loads of people buying size two shoes. You might have loads of people buying size eight shoes. Well, your average it is going to be um, what's it going to be. It's going to be five, but no one's buying size five shoes. So that's going to be really not useful. And the same would go for the median in this case, whereas the mode will be much more useful. How about the city council question? So if we're looking at family sizes here, I would say that uh, the, the, um, the mean is a good shout because then you've sort of got your average family and you, although all of them are averages, like the mode won't be that useful because you know you might have that a lot of people don't have um you know maybe their children have left home or something so they've got zero children at home and um but that's going to mean the mode might be zero that could be quite misleading um the median you might have a similar kind of thing going on as as well but basically the mean i, I don't know my gut feeling here is that the mean will be useful. I hope I've kind of you know, convinced you enough. And then finally, this, the last question about the time taken. Well, in this case, I would argue that the median's really good. We're not, we're not too interested in the most common time taken, but we need to be careful with outliers. So one day it might just take a really long time to get from York to Crewe. Maybe there were delays, maybe they had to take a, uh, an extra bus service. So we should really discount that. And if we want to estimate the next journey, we're not going to be affected by it, and we're going to use the median. OK, here's a little bit more. Maybe going a bit beyond the A-level that we need to know, but I think it's useful to talk about these. So some advantages and disadvantages of the three main averages that we're using. The mode, easy to obtain. And also, it's the only measure that can be used for data that have the character of a nominal scale. That might sound quite complicated, but all this means is, like, let's say I'm, I want to measure the most popular, sorry, not popular, the most common eye color, like blue, green, brown, etc. Then you can't find the mean of this, um, but you can still find the mode. So it has an advantage for when you have kind of, I would say qualitative data. But it's not very uh, stable from sample to sample because, you know, you might one sample just happen to get a load of sevens, whereas another one you might get a load of thirteens. So you've got to be really careful with the mode when you're taking samples. Um, there may be one mode for a particular set of scores. So you might get, like for, the, for my shoe example, you might have loads of twos and loads of eights. So there is no mode in this particular case, actually. How at the same time, you could say that, like, if you kind of expand it a little bit and you say, well, yeah, actually, my mode is both two and eight. So typically, you say there is no mode. But if you say, well, my mode is two and eight, then you would say it was bimodal. And actually, that would be really useful to know that two values in particular are really common. The mean is uh, really good when you want to have a central tendency measure that reflects the total of the scores. So when you want to include every single value, because the median and the mode don't do that. And if you want to do further statistical computation, which we will be doing, it turns out to be really useful as well. Um, that You'll see more of that later on. It's stable from sample to sample, and it's most resistant to chance sampling variation. So we, we I said with the, me, the mode that that wouldn't be the case. Um, however, every time you kind of, you know, you change the values, the mean will change. Like you only have to, maybe you, maybe you misread a value. And so as soon as you get that wrong, the mean is going to be affected. But it shouldn't be affected greatly. 
um, unless you really misread a value and accidentally put like one million in. And that kind of comes in. If you have extreme values, then it, it will be more responsive to that. As we saw on that earlier question, when we had 320, really affected by that one extreme value, whereas the other ones were not. This leaves us with the median. It's less sensitive to a few extreme scores. Obviously, if you have lots of extremes, that's going to be affected, but that you want it to be in that case because it's looking at the central point in terms of the position. Um, it responds, so a disadvantage, it responds to how many scores lie above or below it, but not how far away. So I might have some data that's quite, um, quite evenly spread, and I'd get, I'd get a median of three here, but if I had some more data, like minus 11, um, minus 10, and then three, four, and five, I would get exactly the same median. Uh, whereas the mean would be, it would be reflected in that, that it's, I'm going to have, you know, it will be lowered by the negative. So, you can see there's there can be issues with the medium if you're only looking at the middle value. I mean, and I suppose to sum it up, having the three of them is makes them all useful in different ways. Because if you have, if you suddenly have the same median for both great data sets, but you have a much lower mean for one of them, then that will give you, just through those two numbers, a bit more of a feel for the data. So to sum it up, there is no best one. There, that you know, using them together in many instances is is a great thing. We've looked at finding the mean, mode, median from lists of data, but we've not yet taken that into stem and leaf, an idea that I've int we've introduced in A level. So here's a stem and leaf diagram, and actually it's two stem and leaf diagrams combined. Um, so we can compare the data. We've got the girls on the left and the boys on the right. This is a reaction time and it's in hundreds of seconds. So just a reminder, like this list five here actually means 15 hundredths of a second, which would be 0.15 if I divide that by 100. And it, the key says that one with the line eight means 18. Remember, this is called the stem down the middle, and then we've got the leaves either side. So what I want you to do is pause the video and see if you can calculate the median of the girls and the median of the boys, their reaction times. Before I do this, just note actually that the, the diagram is ordered from highest to lowest. Sometimes it's like often it's lowest to highest, but you know that's okay as long as it's ordered, that's the main thing. Now there's a few ways you can do this. You can kind of do what you may have done before, kind of cross off values until you get to the until you're left with the middle one. You've got to be careful with this approach because actually when you do a double stem and leaf diagram like this, you're going from left to right in terms of order for the one on the right, but you're going from right to left for the leaf on the left. So just be careful how you cross them off. Okay, but this approach works. It will, it will take longer the more data points you have. And we're gonna get 19. The other way of doing it that I've introduced this lesson is to just take the number of points we have, 21, add one to it, and then divide by two. So that's gonna be the 11th value. And then we can count up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and we can get 19 that way. We could also do it by counting from the highest, we get 19. So 19 or 0.19 seconds. For the boys, it's gonna be similar. We can cross them off if we like. I'm going to go straight for this other approach, 24 plus 1 divided by 2, that's going to be 12 and a half, so between the 12th and the 13th values. So if I start from the bottom, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and the 13th, so these are the ones I'm looking at. Actually, in this case, um, the mean of these numbers is itself going to be 7, so I'm going to get 17, so I'm going to get 0.17 seconds, and I could then make some comparisons if I wanted to about this data. We've got that the boys average is, um, sorry, not average, I should, you shouldn't now use the word average. The boys median, to be specific, is, is slightly lower. And we can see from the data set that that's, that's because we've got some of the lowest values here. The lowest one is nine, and that's, like, that's dragging it down. But there's a, there's a load that are sort of down here and bring it down. 
Okay, if n is sufficiently large or varied, usually continuous, then it's likely to be grouped because you wouldn't, you know, for example, heights, there's lots of different values that you can have if you work into the nearest centimeter. Um, sometimes even even more values if you're doing if you're doing sort of the weight of something and it, it might it might vary you might be able to measure it really accurately and you might get a whole host of different values but we typically will then put it into a group frequency table and you can then um, do lots of things with it on this table they've they've started off but not finished uh, creating a cumulative frequency aspect of the table to potentially draw that kind of graph but you can still work out the median um, to some extent, we can have the number of values that we have, 60, we can add one to it, we can divide by two, that would tell us that we've got 30 and a half, uh, the median is at the 30.5th value, and I just realised why they've done this for the community frequency now, because they've counted up and they've seen that the 30.5th value must be in this, um, in this group. We don't know for sure what the number would be, but we know it's in that group. There are ways of, it's called interpolation for like approximating what you think it will be, but we don't cover that on the OCR specification. Um, so for now, we would just say the median was in this group because, because we can see, basically we've done five plus eight, that's 13. And then you can see that the last one in this group is the 35th. So the 30.5th has got to be before that. How do we get an exact value? Like I said, that's for um, to do it from just the table is is a skill we don't cover for OCR, but we do have a way of doing it, and that is to construct a cumulative frequency table. I actually did this in that lesson on median, um, and for, in that case, you draw a graph, and then you would find the the value and read off the graph. Now, note when n is sufficiently large, and typically this is the case for cumulative frequency you don't worry about adding the one and dividing by two. You simply just divide by two to make life easy. Otherwise, you're trying to measure 30.5. It's, you know, it's, you're only, like the width of the line is itself got a probably worth 0.5 or, or close to it. So just be aware of that. Um, if you do go with half n plus one, like you're not doing anything wrong in this case, it's just, um, it's just an additional thing. So just be aware of these two things. The continuous data, we always use a half n, actually. So there, this can be slightly confusing, but I suppose to summarize, use half n plus one for lists and stem and leaf. When you start getting large amounts of data or it's continuous, just forget about adding the one and just do half n. I'm not going to go into any more detail on this because I covered, I covered uh, measuring the me using the median, calculating the median of a cumulative frequency graph previously. Okay, that is that's that's it for this this little mini topic. So we've in, reintroduced averages, but we've talked in more depth about what they are. We've talked about when they're useful, when they're not. Um, we've introduced this idea that for the median, you find the position by doing a half n plus one. We've seen some examples where it works, where where one will work better than the other. As I said, we, we looked at the advantages, disadvantages, and finally, we've just reminded ourselves or or had a go, I should say, at finding the median from a stem and leaf. And then I just mentioned pretty back to uh, group frequency and cumulative frequency. Brilliant.